Welcome back. I hope you got a chance to connect with someone. I hope you got a chance to write something you are thankful for or that just has been good during this time. I think it is always is so important, uh, especially for our mental health and well-being to just always be working through what am I thankful for and what is God doing among us. There are a few just quick announcements. You're going to get a lot of information in the chat room, so make sure you're, you can find one and you're in one. One, Really important, this we want to keep encouraging this every week. If you're not in a community group, join one, grab one, or even think about forming one. You can email me, uh, we can get you connected, and we can make that. We want everybody to be can, to stay connected during this, this season. The other one is um, there's a lot of needs ongoing, and so we're going to post a list kind of some ways you can access uh, right now at our food pantry. They're doing an incredible job. We've opened up a fifth day. We're serving over 450 uh, families every week. But they're doing it in a format where they need t-shirt shopping bags. That information is going to be right here in the chat room as well as all the other places you can get involved, you can give. Uh, we can keep loving others and loving our community in that way. You'll be at other announcements. You can kind of link them on your bulletin. There's a lot going on. Our online community gatherings are still happening this upcoming week. Uh, can't wait to kind of meet with you, maybe at the late lunch on Tuesday or communion on Wednesday. Uh, but let's gather and stay connected all along the way. I want to take some time and also to say thank you. We have been praying for the finances of FPCH in the middle of this kind of season where we are experiencing some economic toll and I just want to share with you that over the last two weeks, both of those weeks have been our highest giving weeks of the year so far, which is just an absolute miracle and testimony to you all amazing people. So we want to keep praying and keep thanking God for all that, that work among us. Let's do that. Uh, and then after that is also as part of that, I'm going to lead us into, uh, we have another visit from a beautiful um, spoken word artist. And so I want to lead us kind of and pray us into that space. I just say, it's just really good to be with you all in this format, and I miss you, and I can't wait for us to be together in person again soon. Let's pray. Holy Spirit, we want to say thank you, thank you, thank you so much for all the amazing goodness that you have poured out, especially as it wraps around our finances, and we want to pray that you continue to allow us to give, that you would continue to <laughs> sacrificially, joyfully, as we do our best work to love you, to love each other, to make sure nobody slips through the cracks, and then to pour ourselves out on behalf of our community, especially those who are in so desperate need during this season. Pray you can help us continue to give uh, in all the different formats you have us. And then I want to pray that you would allow us in this space, God, to really hear from you. Um, and maybe not, maybe in this kind of as we engage the subject of doubts and questions and your absence, that you would lead us in that and, and help us to engage how we're feeling fully. Do that through spoken word. Do that through the scripture. Do that through some reflections and some words and do that through song. I just want to say thank you. Pray for all the giving pieces, the spoken word pieces, the sermon pieces, and that you would speak so clearly in it. Pray these things in your name. Amen. Hey guys, my name is Cecil Williams. I am the founder of The Craft Factory and just an all-around creative. Before you watch this visual, my hope is that this will be thought-provoking, that it encourages you and it challenges you, but at the end of the day, that we treat stuff differently and value things in ways that we haven't valued them before. What if we become more grateful for life? that life is short, realizing that it's a precious gift that God breathed, that this life that we live will never just be about us. What if we fully understand that in this life, we have a responsibility to give life to others through love, through hope, and through purpose, that it should not be treated as a cat with nine lives, but a person who was known by a sovereign God before he was even put together. What if we were to live in a world where affirmation to our children become a habit instead of a reward? 
where affection and tough conversations won't be as hard for them, where mothers are there not just physically, but are present in spirit, or fathers who are not just there in the spirit, but are physically present. What if families become whole again? That dinner can be held at tables for unity instead of in their rooms of self-loathing. Generational curses and bad habits can be broken. Legacies can be intact. That we do not have to operate from the land of trauma and disappointment. What if friendships knew how to truly be honest, feeling okay with showing scars without the waves of rejection and fear consuming them? To be okay and being free, knowing that maturing and growing is a part of the process and not a fear tactic. What if we gave and kept on giving? That selfishness wasn't an excellent plan for us. That as a people, we refuse to take shortcuts in being a blessing to people. To understand that taking credit may cost, but planting a seed can be priceless. Giving a hug, a smile, a phone call, a text, a letter, a prayer, it all means something. What if we simply enjoyed every second that we're alive? To be humble and attentive to needs, to gain perspective on what really matters, to steward our minds, our hearts, and our gifts well, so others can have a blueprint to follow. For now, everything is standing still. The roads are clear. We are in a place of choosing to be greedy in our wants or to be reflective in our choices. Everyone is forced to press pause. We have a grand opportunity to allow ourselves to take advantage of this reset God has given us as this shift is happening. Can you see it? Can you feel it? Do you believe it? You see, what if is not just a figure of speech? What if is rooted in the foundation of knowing that something can be possible. And when we are able to bring forth something that is deemed as impossible to the realm of possibility, when the dust settles, and when we embrace this new life, this new normal that awaits us, how will you treat it? How will you view it? What will you do with it? Because what if is the first step of rearranging your reality?